Welcome aboard for another video. Thanks, Conductor Keith. Now, Terry, you might ask, what are you doing with two Canadian tire buckets? Well, I trolled around online looking for some large-scale oil tanks. Well, I could get one that was about this size, scale and all that, of course, but for like $300. And I thought, hmm, so this bucket cost me about $4 Canadian, which is about $3 US. Uh, 280 British pounds. And this bucket cost only about $2 more. That's 0.3% of the cost of one scale, large scale tank. Ah, the squirrels are gathering nuts out front outside our windows. I'll just cut them off around here or maybe here somehow, just to leave a little lip on the bottom. So in the uh, spirit of using everything, I've taken this off the other bucket and that's the handle which I could potentially use, cut it in half, maybe right there, whatever, and have some vents. I don't need to worry about the bottoms of the containers being completely even in the cut. Like if you look closely, it might be a little uneven. It doesn't matter because it's gonna be covered in scenery material anyway. I'm considering turning the smaller buckets, bits that I cut off, into this artillery enclosure. I think I will. I've also cut these pieces that were the handles to make vents. Now I'm gonna use files to smooth that down and glue them on. Well, this won't take long, smooth out the edges of those. I've decided I'm only putting one vent on each and I'm gonna hold these two pieces back for a future building, possibly the roof of the warehouse I'm gonna build here. And here we are. Now I'm just gonna wait for this first coating to dry to see if I need a second one. Well, the oil tanks are coming along, starting to look good. Voila, yeah, add a bit of weathering to that, put scenery around it, stones in there or concrete or whatever, and it'll fit right in with the military training ground. I went online and I found an early SO logo. I'm just loading it up onto this document and we'll send it to the printer. I've cut one out and this is thick paper. It's thicker than thin, um, so that glue won't the glue won't come through it. Now, for outdoor use, when I make labels like this for outdoors, I take something like a really thin outdoor, you know, varathene for wood. I soak the paper on one side, turn it over, soak the paper on the other side. And when you hold it up, it becomes sort of transparent. That's because the varathene has gone through the paper. Then I hang it up. When it's completely dry, then I cut it out. And what it looks like, it looks just like paper, except that it's completely and utterly waterproof. But in this case, because these tanks are gonna be indoors, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna use wood glue on the back of that, and we're gonna paste it on here and see what happens. So I just smeared it around on the back to make it tacky. There, that's a darn sight cheaper uh, than a $300 tank. Now that doesn't look too bad. I will note that the old ESO logo was actually put on this way but I kind of like it like that better. It's my railway, so I'm putting it that way. Now, my friend Dave in Scotland and Steve in England, I'll leave a link to their channels in the description to this video, um, very adamant in a way, in their gentle way, that I should have uh, a, a nice ladder structure going up the side, and of course I agree. Now, that got me thinking. In the northern climate, in parts of Canada that have a super deep freeze in the middle of winter, I have seen old pictures or old structures where piping is insulated. Uh, and so that got me thinking that I should insulate the pipes in something like this. So when you, you know, I'll put that on there and the pipes come down insulated, but making ladders is no great fun. So I used a stapler. I experimented with spacing and came up with this. This put them at the depth I liked. Of course I measured them, put a hash mark there. So what you have is grab irons. I'm gonna scrape away a little bit of paint on the side under there. Glob on some Gorilla Glue. I like using this super glue gel. And I'm gonna glue that on, spray it all black, and we'll see what it looks like. So now the tanks are not looking too bad, and we don't want this fellow falling off, so we need some handrails. Enter nails and 18 gauge wire for railings. Well, this has been a simple matter of just hammering these things in to a height that uh, seemed appropriate. Just get them to the, all the same height. Just like that. I drilled the hole for these in the wood so I didn't split the wood and I'm just gonna use a bit of glue and put the nail in right there like that. Now it's a simple matter of stringing 
We're very carefully taking the wire. Say the gauge. Maybe it could have got lighter, but well, it'll work. And stringing along like that. And I'll just go around until I'm finished. I don't know what this thing is. It's just a piece of plastic from something, but I put it there anyway. I didn't like this gap you see there near the top because presumably that's where the pipe comes out and down into the channel here. So, you know, just for fun, I took a piece of brass rail and stuck it on. I'll spray paint that over. Well, a bit of spray all around with that. And you know, these tanks are looking pretty good. Looks like it's wire roped off, like a wire rope top rail. Ah, I think they look pretty good. Not bad, including the paint and the buckets. It's probably $25. And the nails I needed anyway for other, another project, so that's fine. And the wire was just like 10 bucks for a roll of 250 feet, which I'm gonna use to string wire here, overhead wire for an electric locomotive. So nothing's wasted. Yeah, not bad. I think I just saved essentially $600 and I've got two serviceable tanks. Of course, it's not finished. I've got this copper, copper wire that I'm gonna bend into lines to fill the tank cars, etc. And I've got this I found for an, you know, an on off valve. I'm gonna build that structure here, but not until the scenery is done. So I'm not exactly sure what's gonna be. So, but for now, that's good. For now, I've got tanks. And here you go. Nice, inexpensive, not bad looking tanks. Real railroads always carried an idler car between the locomotive and tank cars, and in the age of cabooses between the tank cars and cabooses as well. Oh, Henry, it's so good to see some new industry in rail cars coming to the Pencross Railway oh, of Eastern yes, Ontario. Yes, yes, Marge, yes, and I, uh, you know that I really like the tank cars. And of course the friar is here in his new favorite train watching location. Even though he has a vow of silence, he did hand me a note to say that he wishes people would subscribe, comment, like, but most importantly share this video so we can help encourage the growth of our hobby.